Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I am super excited because I got my hands on the all new Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra and we're going to test out some emulation on this device. But before we get started here, I do want to mention that I did not purchase this specifically for emulation. I personally didn't purchase this at all. This is actually one of my good buddy's phones. He let me borrow it for three days, so I got a few videos that I'm going to be doing on it. But I figured the first one would be emulation. Now, I've been trying to get my hands on a Snapdragon 865 Plus powered device for a long time now. I actually have the ROG Phone 3 on the way, but it's shipping from China, and it's going to take a while. As we all know, Samsung charges a grip for the Note series, and this one's no different. This is the Ultra 128GB model, and they come in at $1,300. So I'm definitely expecting some good performance from everything that I test in this video. So obviously this is not a review video, but I do want to give you a quick rundown on the basic specs. There's a lot more to this phone than we're going to be listing here, but this is just the basic performance specs. For the CPU, we have the new Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 Plus. It's an 8-core CPU, 4 smaller cores at 1.8, 3 bigger cores at 2.42, and 1 big boy core at 3 GHz. The GPU is an overclocked Arduino 650, and Qualcomm claims that this can offer up to 10% better GPU performance than the original Snapdragon 865. 12GB of RAM, 128GB of internal storage, plus a micro SD card slot, and you can throw in up to 2 terabytes. and the display on this thing is absolutely beautiful. It's a 120Hz display, but it can't do that at its highest resolution. It's a 6.9 inch dynamic AMOLED up to 1440 by 3088 so yeah, I'm pretty sure that this thing's going to be a beast when it comes to emulation. And I personally like using a physical controller, so I'm going to be using the Razer Kishi. This is a USB Type-C controller. It does not connect over Bluetooth, so we have zero latency here. And it just happens that the Note 20 Ultra does fit in here quite well. I've already done a review video on the Kishi. This is one of my favorite Android controllers, mainly because it connects over USB Type-C and we have no latency whatsoever as opposed to something connected over Bluetooth. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. First up, we got some Dreamcast. I was 100% sure that we'd get some full speed emulation here, but I wasn't sure how far we'd be able to upscale and it's pretty ridiculous actually. 3840 by 2880. No trouble at all with everything that I tested. With each one of these games you're going to see tested in this video, I will have the name of the system, the name of the emulator, and if I'm upscaled or not, plus the name of the game so you know what's going on at any given time. And if we take a look in the top left hand corner on the phone screen, we have the FPS listed. I do have a couple more Dreamcast games to test out, but basically, if the game's compatible with the emulator, this will run it at full speed, even upscaled to 3840 by 2880. Alright, so let's go ahead and move over to PSP. I've just swapped over to a little different setup. I'm using an Xbox One S controller connected over Bluetooth. This is absolutely insane. I'm at 10x resolution. I'm upscaled to 3x, which is the highest we can go here. And I have filtering at 16x. So we're basically maxed out here with PSP on the Note 20 Ultra. This is Tekken 6, not the hardest one to run, but we'll take a look at the harder ones in a second. I do want to mention that going to 10x on a device like this is totally unnecessary. Our screen resolution isn't going to match the resolution of the game itself, but the game is still being rendered inside of the emulator at 10x. Plus, we have that 3x upscale going on, and it looks beautiful on this display. Like I mentioned, this isn't the hardest one to run. I classify this as a mid-range game for PSP because I've tested it on a lot of devices. The harder ones to run are Midnight Club 3 and the God of War games. Unfortunately, those games just can't handle 10x, but they can do 5x. Here's Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition. We are at 5x resolution. We're also at 3x upscale. 
and 16x filtering, and this device is running it at full speed. 60 FPS, haven't had any hiccups at all. And the final game we're testing here is Ghost of Sparta. Again, we're at 5x resolution. I turned the upscale off because I was having a few stutters here and there, but I do have filtering set at 16. So basically, the Snapdragon 865 Plus that's in the Note 20 Ultra here is an absolute monster when it comes to PSP emulation. Running this game at 5x on a mobile device is pretty amazing. Next on the list, we have some 3DS emulation using Citra for Android. We're at 2x resolution. This is Dead or Alive Dimensions. Performance with this emulator has definitely been improving in the last few months, and all of the issues that you're seeing in this video, which really comes down to the sound cutting out, is due to the emulator itself. I totally believe that this phone and the Snapdragon 855 do have enough power to run these 3DS games, but there needs to be more optimization with the... Moving over to GameCube emulation using the Dolphin emulator, I am upscaled to 1080p and I'm using the Vulcan back in. This is Soul Calibur 2. Not the hardest to run, but as you can see, we're getting full speed with it. I got a few more to test here, along with a couple Wii games. Everybody wants to see Super Mario Sunshine tested, and it's running at full speed. This natively ran at 30 FPS on the original GameCube hardware, and that's what we have here. But both of these games that you just saw aren't the hardest to run. One of the hardest is actually Automotalista in my experience, and we are getting 60 FPS with this game at 1080p. On the Snapdragon 855 and 855 Plus, it was so close, but with this 865 Plus, we're hitting that full speed mark. I also wanted to test a couple Wii games using the Dolphin emulator. This is Sonic Colors, and this also natively ran at 30 FPS on the original hardware, and we're hitting 30. Performance here is really good. I'm still upscaled to 1080p using the Vulcan back end, but this doesn't mean that every single Wii game is going to run at full speed on this device or device with this chipset, because when I moved over to Tatsunoko vs. Capcom, which is a harder one to run, I ran into a lot of issues. And there's just a lot of effects on screen. When I start pulling off these special moves, everything slows down. And this is not shader cache, because after it's cached, it keeps doing it. Next up, we have some PS2 emulation using Damon PS2 Pro. I'm not a big fan of this emulator. I did purchase it before all of the controversy came out. But they've been updating, and performance has really increased with this emulator. And to tell you the truth, this is some of the best performance that I've seen on this emulator out of an ARM device. We have Tekken 5 here. It does use a lot of hacks in the background, but we do have Tekken 5 running at full speed. And it actually handled the next game I'm going to test quite well. So Damon PS2 Pro handled both of the games we just tested, Tekken 5 and God of War 2, but when we move over to something really hard to run, which is Shadow of the Colossus, this whole thing just falls on its face. I've never been able to get this game to run at full speed on an ARM device, and this is no different.
So yeah, going into this, I knew that the Note 20 Ultra would definitely perform well with most of the stuff that we tested. After all, this is a $1,300 phone, and you don't go out and buy one of these specifically for emulation. But if you do pick one of these up on a contract, whatever service you're with and you're paying per month and this is your main phone, just note that emulation is totally possible on this. And it's definitely some of the best that I've seen and tested out of any mobile device so far on my channel. But that's it for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, just let me know in the comments below because I do have this for a couple more days. And like always, thanks for watching.